I wanted to see this. I think Critical already talked about it. I know. I saw this everywhere. Apparently, this guy's been on some, like, copyright strike spree or some garbage. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. I get 1080p enhanced bitrate. Watch using enhanced bitrate at premium. Muha already covered it where... Ah, oh, it's the first video. Business Casual, owned by a man named Alex Edson, whom I've covered before, has filed three deliberate strikes for just a few seconds of content based on public domain images against a channel named Magnates Media. Strikes Short version is Alex is evil. Is he the guy who did that documentary saying Google le bad? Because I, I watched through that and I thought it was like very disingenuous when it came out like months ago. A successful channel he's devoted the past five years of his life to will be deleted full scale. I consider this to be the fraudulent attempted assassination of a competitor's career. And eight months ago, I tried to warn people. All right, the title is kind of extreme. I get that, but I'm pretty sure it's justified. So please hear me out. I, I don't even think the title is extreme. He literally said the word, <laughs> he said like bro said the word assassination unironically. And, and now he's got like some fucking like black ops tape recorder. You know at the end, if I'm right about that, here's the situation. A while ago, I covered a lawsuit against YouTube as a platform by a channel named Business Casual. Not just any lawsuit, this lawsuit was being pursued by a man named Alex Edson. Alex is Business Casual, ah. Uh. recently bought the YouTube channel. He was not the original creator or the person- No, behind. he left a dislike, no! Oh my God. I'm gonna dislike the video, that's gonna stop him. Videos, ...and had now decided that a few seconds of his footage served as justification for taking down the entire Russia Today YouTube network. Alex Edson, in a rather long, high production value video, which, contrary to what he says, was not being suppressed at all, and many of you have likely already seen, went on the attack and asserted- I, I, Honestly, I do want to say, I hate when YouTubers say my video is being suppressed. It's such a cope. You really do just get unlucky, bro. Like, not, not every video you make is going to get, like, a million views or, like, you know, what you want. Unfortunately, some of them flop. Like, I saw, uh, I, I mean, a, a good example is, uh, I, I saw Tommy in it do an interview, uh, a podcast. Happy and early birthday, Pyro. Thank you, Carter, for the 10. And tell me in it, he speaks so professionally. Like, how old is he? Like, like 19 or, or 20 or something? But he literally speaks like a, a CEO, like a 30 or 40-year-old CEO. He is so business-minded. Like, the kid is super clever, right? The thing is, though, is, is like, even though he talks about knowing about all the metadata and all these analytics and stuff, like, even him sometimes, he'll have videos that get, like, you know, sleeper views compared to the rest. It, it, it's happened to me. It happens to everyone. It sucks. You feel like dog shit. But I, I hate when people kind of act like that YouTube has, like, a big plan against them. It's so... I mean, okay, hang on, hang on. Let's, let's see if... If his video is still even up, let's see if it even has why I'm suing YouTube. So, is that tits? Holy based. Okay, hang on. I'm gonna watch that later. God damn. Hang on. Let, let, let's see if this is uh, it's not even age gated. Probably not even demonetized. I was mainly looking for like an age gate. The world will not be destroyed by those who do evil, but by those who watch them and do nothing. Okay, bro, bro saw Oppenheimer. Bro saw Oppenheimer like once. This is a video that YouTube does not want you to watch. It's also a video that I did not want to publish for over a year. How are you going to have a backdrop that good, a setup that good, but your audio mixing is fucking ass? Like, bro, sounds like he's talking into like a foot. ...of policy-related topics, a secret menu, if you will, which it provides to respected legal professors. Oh, he's got the, he's got the multi-camera set up. Okay, I, okay, guys, I'm, I, I actually believe him now. I think this guy here, off echelon's full of shit. I, he, I believe him. He's got the more... I really hope he's got a handheld as well. ...oftentimes appear before courts in important cases that Google is not actually party to, but would be affected by. Is that a real flag? Yeah, it is. ...actually has a secret off-the-books policy, a policy that... Bro got 2.1 million... Bro got 2.2 million views. And he's, like, talking about his video being suppressed. It didn't get Bruh. as much as... Happy birthday, Pyro. Can't believe you are as old as Colossal Clone Man. No, no one's old as Colossal. He's actually 300 years old. Like, like no joke. Is the video for Cruelty Squad still coming out this month? I saw you asking for editors on Twitter. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I, I asked for a new editor because at the minute, uh, the editing team is just me and uh, Ramska. Uh, that's it. We recently took on a third guy, but we want to get a fourth guy as well. But yeah, uh, that, that that's basically because I don't want to get Cruelty Squad out and then there's no upload on main for another six months. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like, holy shit, I'm 26 soon. It's like, I need to actually ramp up video production and stop getting out like two videos a year. But I don't want to go like corporate as well. I don't want it to be like, you know, game theory, like where it's just a, a formula. I really don't. That's what I'm scared of. But I, I need more editors pretty much. I haven't looked at the list yet. I'm going to wait until the cutoff date, which I think was the 15th. 
15th of May. And then me and my editor are basically just going to sit through and go through uh, all the applications. And then what we were going to do was pick everyone who did a really good job that we liked. And then we're going to get them to do a much more difficult edit and they're going to get paid for that. So, yeah. The Russian government and other channels that YouTube deems as special. Under the secret policy, channels... Yeah, honestly, the, the, this whole video gives huge, like, Vox vibes. Like, 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 the editing is the exact same as Vox. I like watching Vox sometimes. They've got some really informative stuff. But, anyways. ...asserted that YouTube was undermining America and helping the Kremlin because a channel had used a few seconds of their copyrighted parallax animations. This is the part where I tell everyone to go watch a bunch of additional videos for context. I know that's annoying, so I'll try to summarize in a very, very fast way. There are three videos that I made down below to back up every single one of these claims, piece by piece, as well as a link to the original business casual lawsuit video. But here's the gist of it for people that don't want to sink the time into doing that. I like how this guy is panicked and he's trying so hard to condense this drama into like a very digestible amount of information because like everyone's attention span is completely fucking sharp, bro. Like next generation is a TikTok. We're all going to have like some soft form of like ADD. It's it's insane. This guy is so scared about retention. It's like, okay, I need, I need to explain everything. I, I, I'll be quick. I'll be quick. Alex Edson bought the business casual channel some time ago. Most of the original content there was not made by him. Once he owned it, he discovered that RT, Russia Today, more specifically RT Arabic, owned by TV Novosti, had used a few clips from his videos and decided to do something about it. He got very, very angry. Fine by me, whatever, who cares? His chosen attack vector was to say that they had infringed his copyright egregiously and deliberately. He filed strikes, conversed with RT Arabic in emails, got them to admit that they had used his content, and then went for the throat. One problem, he actually put himself on record in an affidavit undermining the entire premise of his own lawsuit because there have been network level strike parameters set out by YouTube since 2019. More details in my old videos. His lawsuit was an absolute joke. Setting that aside because it does- So he tried to sue them because they used footage in the news without uh, his permission, I think. It doesn't affect me, nor do I care what happens between a copyright troll and a Russian state-sponsored media outlet. That's the least of my priorities. We now have to look at his other lawsuit and general claims. Alex Edson wasn't just- I'm getting some Billy Bobby Ferguson energy here, man. I, I really am. There's a lot of lawsuits being thrown around here. Is that him with Jake Paul? What the hell? I've okay, I, okay, I trust this guy a lot less now. Christ. Christ. Anyone that's associated with Jake Paul. Jake Paul's former manager. Oh! Oh! No! No, he looks like Harry Potter. What? The? He looks like Harry Potter from like the first two films. He's like a little orphan. Oh, no, that's that's not good. Like like being Jake Paul's manager. Oh, oh, you had to do some some blood sacrifices there. Jesus, you probably shot that Titus video as well. You know that kid Titus that like Jake and Logan Paul were, were shilling everywhere. Hang on. What the fuck? I'm gay. What's that? Come on, I'm gay. This I can only play it for like two seconds because they're going to strike me. But just, just listen to the editing of the kid's voice. It sounds like Logan and Jake just fed him cigarettes. Listen. Like, it's, it's, all, it's awful. There were so many people in that bubble that they all just like fell off on their own. It's insane. Trying to get every single channel of this global organization banned outright because they used a few clips that were a few seconds long. He was also suing YouTube itself. Why? Well, I, I didn't even know that TARDIS video existed. The only reason I found it is because when I was scrolling TikTok, I was seeing people playing like absolute dog shit in Six Siege, and they would always put that video of Titus as the <laughs> audio on top of it. Because he thinks that YouTube is deliberately <laughs> profiting off of copyright infringement. And you know what? Maybe. I don't know. There definitely are a lot of bootlegged movies and shows, but then again, those get shut down over time because operating a platform at scale is an imperfect thing. Still, YouTube can be criticized for that. No question. Absolutely. So what's the real problem? The real problem is that in his own lawsuit, Business Casual's legal team argued something very specific, which is critical to understand. For context, I went through all of their sh From the court, quote, Let me ask you another question, Mr. Duff. The way that you describe it, it seems that it's just as easy to game the system from the front side as from the back side. What I mean by that is, it sounds like it's just as easy for a bad guy, let's say in this case, the defendant, to affirmatively or preemptively file a notification of infringement against you and then file two more Pyro within bro 90 man. days. What is you your advice strike. on long-term so investment? Stop a bad guy from doing that if all that has to happen is that you just file a notice of infringement. In response, Mr. Duff, part of Business Casual's legal...
Uh, what's your advice on long-term investment? I, I I don't know, bro. What are you asking? Like 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 crypto, like money, like investment in life, investment in women. I don't I don't really I I I got loads of little investments like crypto and stuff. No, that's that, that's pretty much it. And uh, and property as well. It's just uh it's just starting off small with smaller things. Representation said, "Quote, Your Honor, that is an excellent question. You are right. Bad actors are always going to try and find a way to game the system." Problem. I know the word bad actor is an actual professional word used for people that have ill intent. But whenever I hear the word bad actor, I just think of those like Barbie egg videos that were like plaguing YouTube because they were called bad actors, like bad actor content. So that word is just associated with my brain. You guys remember the, the, the giant Barbie egg, right? If I look up YouTube bad actors, it'll probably come up with that actually. No, it just comes up with fuckers. Ah, it's my video. Oh, that's cool. Uh, okay, giant... Barbie egg. Oh, this is cinema. Hi everyone, it's All Toy Collector here. And today I have a giant Barbie egg. Giant Barbie egg. If you squint your eyes, you can see it's like a red dot laser pointer like on her head. If she doesn't finish the line, lights out. Here is that the adjudication requirement is not only included in the digital millennium copy. Is it, why, why are you all saying milkers? I, I won't even look in there, bro. I was looking at her mouth. If you read the other provisions of the DMCA Safe Harbor, section 512, it's clear that Congress did not want parties to have to sue to enforce their rights. So while it may be that the system could be gamed on the other side, that's how Congress intended it to be, end quote. That right there is business casual, arguing that simply because he filed just some strikes, donating it therefore to interrupt means that this YouTube- huge testament made by. I'm a surgeon. I- I think his son had a stroke. The Matan kid came from- <laughs> Needs to terminate the entire channel without him proving anything in a court of law. That's what we just read. And that appears to be precisely what he's doing now to a channel named Magnates Media. YouTube sponsorships are all about being relatable. All of you every day are being absolutely bombarded by advertising and sponsors and offers and links, which means one of two things. Either you click some of them, which can actually put you dramatically at risk, or you tune out, making YouTube sponsorships basically useless because you just don't care. Yeah, I, I will be honest, like as a, as a YouTuber, you're so pumped with ads that you actually become completely jaded to it. Like, I'm not joking you. Today on my new laptop, right, I bought Microsoft Word so I can script main channel videos when I'm like away, when I'm, you know, traveling. I, I typed in Microsoft Word into the search bar. It came up with Microsoft Word to buy from the official store. But then I saw at the top, it said sponsored. So my brain was like not clicking that. And then I scrolled down three links later. It was the exact same link, but it just wasn't sponsored. And then I clicked that. So I, I just always avoid like, like, like sponsored shit. I really do. And I think as well, it's more like, like, I don't hate the YouTuber if they do a sponsor, right? We're all trying to make bread. But it's it's like any sponsor I've seen on YouTube is something that I have myself or like, well, yeah, it, it's something I'd have myself. Like like HelloFresh, like a VPN, like, like, like I use all these services, so I don't need an additional one. I want to change that, at least for this channel. Today's sponsor is Guardia. Imagine writing scripts for videos. Okay, bro, we weren't all born with fucking photographic memory, so you can just look at like a whiteboard for two seconds and recall everything. Some of us are a little bit slow in the brain and we need Microsoft Word to write shit, right? Comes in my chat flexing, Jesus. Yeah, it's it's, it's amazing that Wendigoon can do that. Like, like no scripting, nothing. It's just, I'm fucking jealous. Like, bro, my fucking, I tell you what, hang on a minute. Hang on, let me pull up my script for Cruelty Squad. Where is it? Oh shit, where's the script gone? Where's the script gone? Uh-oh, where's the script gone? Where's it fucking gone? Uh-oh. I can't find the Cruelty Squad script, but I am I am working on a new script at the minute and it's like 5,000 words. I don't want to show any of it though. No, I don't, I don't want to show it on stream. Okay, you know what, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to show this. Uh, I'm not showing anything personal here, am I? This is the new uh, video I'm working on. Uh, take your take your screenshots now. If if you know if you know what this is, this is an excerpt from the game. If you know, you know. If you don't know, unlucky. But yeah, the Cruelty Squad script was like sixty thousand words or so, having to like structure all of it. Like, <sighs> yeah, I don't know where the fucking script's gone. I I did voice all of it, thank God, but I can't fucking find it, which is kind of worrying me a little bit. That's hilarious. I how the fuck did I lose the script? I might I I might kill myself on stream in a video game. Where, where's it gone? Oh, fuck no. I didn't overwrite it. Please don't tell me I overwrote it with Andrew Tate being poisoned. Please don't tell me I did that. Well, I guess that's it. So, fuck me. Oh, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Holy! Holy! Okay. 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 We found it. We found it. We fucking found it. I was, I was about to, I was about to jump out my window despite me living on the ground floor. Uh, thank you, Rox. For the one month, my GF broke up with me because you lost the scripts.
Well, I found it. Go and fuck her. There you go. So I'm not showing you the script. You can fuck off. I'm not spoiling it. But look at that at the bottom. 50, 50, 50. 51,000 words. 51. Hang on. 51,000 words in reading time. Yeah, so, okay. So you, you see how it says 2.8 hours? I don't think that's not including all the cutaways and the edits and stuff. So the video will probably be at least three and a half hours, probably four hours. It's going to be longer than that. It's definitely, like, like, I looked at the timeline. It's like nearly four hours. I, I got so many people voicing the NPCs though. I got like Jaden Animation, I got Critical, I got Odds One Out, uh, uh, H-Bummer recently. Uh, he was nice enough to say he'd do some lines. Civvy as well, who also did a video on Cruelty Squad. I got Vine Source, Joel. I got Vine Source, Vinny. Uh, I didn't get Max Mofo because that he's such a lazy bastard. I, I got Chad's lines though. Uh, anything for views. I, I, didn't, I didn't get Max's because he's lazy. He, I, I just said to him like a day later, I was like, can you get me the lines? And then he just says, I have aid on bed. I got Wendigoon as well. Wendigoon was nice enough to lend me his voice. So yeah, it's uh, it's going to be fucking cool, man. Shout out to Max. No, definitely not. He's a little maggot. Could have been in this video. He's like, fuck no. I'm going to stop jerking myself off on stream. Agnes Media, who makes very good content, by the way. I've actually watched quite a bit of it and I'm subscribed to them now, of course, has produced over 250 videos in the past couple of years. Of those 250, a very small number are similar in topic to those of business casual by way of the niche that they occupy. Of that small number, the similar topics are effectively where the connection stops, with wildly different lengths for every single video. What I mean by this is that the business casual video pertaining to Andrew Carnegie... I would have said no if the video relied on Microsoft Word. What the fuck? What, what the fuck is wrong with Microsoft Word? I just paid 150 quid today to get it on my new laptop. Wait, 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 wait. What? What's wrong with Microsoft Word, bro? Imagine asking... Daddy Bill Gates for permission to make a video. Everyone laugh at this man. Okay, Wendigoon, imagine if whiteboards went out of stock one day. Imagine if there was a whiteboard shortage. Your career would be fucking over, bro. No way to do your fucking spider diagrams then, is there? No way to do your annotations. It'd be over. There's nothing wrong with Microsoft Word. I like how I'm mocking him for having a whiteboard. I've literally got a whiteboard over there that says 100 squats, 100 push-ups. I don't even do them. I, I don't see the problem with, with Microsoft Word. It's like not, not born without photographic memory. Unlucky. Carnegie Unlucky. Is 16 minutes long, but the video about Andrew Carnegie from Magnates Media is 54 minutes long. Of that 54 minutes, quite literally one second of footage not a typo or some like hyperbolic exaggeration. No, one second of footage is reportedly similar. It's this photo actually. And I was also able to obtain a recording of the editor's timeline from Magnates Media showcasing that this was not simply ripped out of a video and added to theirs. It is a deeply customized animation derived from a public image. Let me just outline the entire situation again for absolute clarity. So we struck him over a public image. That, that's probably the most respectful YouTube copyright strike I've ever seen in my life. I, I, I like how it's always a second of footage as well. It's like you play Ice Spice for a second. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, revenue. We take it all away. Bye-bye. Business Casual filed two separate lawsuits. One against TV Novosti, where they appear to have received- One thing I love is like, if I shown Thanos from Fortnite, the content ID bot would probably think I'm showing Avengers Endgame, right? And strike me. But then you have like people- they upload films from like China and they will record it on their fucking, uh, their, their iPhone, right? Also, uh, Android is better than iPhone. I call iPhones iPaw. They'd, they'd record it on their iPaw and then they upload it online. You know, free free movie, 4K, 4K quality. And that's allowed. That that gets put on YouTube. Have you noticed? Have you noticed one thing I've noticed? The content ID bar is the most easy fucking thing to fool. So you know the way YouTube works, right? Is three seconds is your limit. Three seconds. You can't play anything more than three seconds because then the bot will scan it. So one thing you might have noticed, if you look at films that have been uploaded to YouTube, like clips, and they're still in cinema, do you notice how the film will jump Jump scene to scene every couple seconds. They don't upload the clip in its entirety. It jumps. It keeps jumping. Like dialogue will be overwrote halfway through and then it will jump to a new scene. They do that because the bot can't actually detect that it's copyrighted material. It, it's sneaky, but it still works. Like even today, it's insane. Judgment in the case, which I wholeheartedly disagree with here for a variety of reasons, but whatever. I'm not going to go to bat for Russia today. They can defend themselves or not. Apparently, they can't even get an adequate lawyer as a result of international sanctions and pressure. The other lawsuit, however, was- It probably runs on Microsoft Word. There's no way I'm not banning you right now. There's no way. Why can't I time you out? Is it because you're verified? <laughs> Just hide user. <laughs> against YouTube, which was unceremoniously thrown in the trash, where they argued that they should not have to prove anything in a court of law, 
YouTube should merely terminate channels accused immediately. Now, after those events have died down, business casual Alex Edson files a strike against a similar YouTube channel to his own, covering business, finance, and entrepreneurial topics. But he doesn't stop there. Rapid fire, he files two more strikes, each one for less than four or five. Oh, three strikes. Bro, th bro thinks he's Sam Pepper. Permanent. I know I've said this in a lot of videos and he's saying it right now, but like when you get three strikes, it actually starts a countdown on your channel. It, it, it It's like, you know, CSGO, the bomb has been planted, like bomb site B. And, and the, the, the timer is actually starting. It is terrifying. Deletion forever. And Alex Edson, after his lawyer argued that they shouldn't even need to prove their case before YouTube punishes the accused, has now set this channel up for termination because of a few seconds where the footage shown is highly customized. Here's where we need a bit more clarity because Alex Edson is unhinged. In his original one hour, 47 minute anti-YouTube video about how YouTube and Google are trying to undermine America in support of the Kremlin because a media outlet used his shitty little intro to film 101 parallax animations. Oh, God forbid. Alex Edson makes a very specific claim. After ripping our video from our channel, RT then used a digital eraser to scrape off our watermark, which they replaced <laughs> with their own watermark. But they didn't stop no. there. That is categorically that, untrue. I like how this is the equivalent of like when like like you, you know those like gimmick Twitter accounts that they all just like steal from each other. It's like no, he took my watermark. No. The watermark he's talking about is an inserted clickable button at a platform level done by YouTube. It's a way to subscribe. If you download the video through any other format ever, any at all, there is no watermark because it isn't a watermark. Alex Edson has agreed- Oh, that's right. Yeah. So there's this really weird feature that YouTube has. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see it there? So if you turn on annotations, you can actually put on a watermark. It's so useless though. I don't understand why it's there. I really don't understand. It, it, it's like, do you remember when you had like video replies? You could do a reply video to someone. And do you remember when YouTube had actual annotations and they got rid of them because like no one clicked on them? I do not understand why these watermarks have persisted because they don't watermark the video. You can quickly get rid of it. There you go. It's off. It just doesn't, it doesn't do anything. I don't really understand like what the point is. Egeously misrepresented reality here. And that needs to be stated plainly. Hopefully people can start to get a complete idea of what's happening, or at least a more complete idea, but I'll spell it out. Because of a collective six seconds, three in the first strike, one in the second strike, and two in the third, Magnates Media is about to have his entire channel terminated. Let me show you one of the precise images that we're talking about here. I want there to be no dispute on this. Alex, you're not weaseling your way out of this. I swear to you, you're not. Also, this is the image that was specifically cited by Alex Edson himself in private communication with Magnates Media, where he said, quote, your video. <laughs> Alex liked his own video, Lamau. Yeah, it's it's probably the saddest thing when you see someone like their own video. I remember when PewDiePie did that whenever he uploaded. And quote, your videos constituted wholesale copying of my copyrighted content. You did not transform my content in any way whatsoever. You also took my copyrighted script put it into chat GPT or some other generative AI software and made slight tweaks. Even more, upon a brief encounter- I've seen so many videos about how chat GPT is actual dog shit. If you're unironically 12 years old and you've got to write an essay about like your dog, then you, chat GPT probably has you covered. But like, you don't even need like an algorithm to check a paper if it has chat GPT because the, the problem is with chat GPT and like other AI stuff, it tends to repeat the same words over and over, like generously and stuff like, like describing words. Upon a brief and casual viewing of your infringing video, my copyrighted material was instantly recognizable. You did not transform my video in any meaningful way whatsoever. Your video is also about the same topic as my video, i.e. it serves the same purpose with the same target audience. There is no genuine dispute about this. And lastly, your actions will not be viewed favorably in federal court. If you desire to avoid the same fate as RT, Russia Today, I suggest that you immediately apologize for your egregious and unlawful behavior using generative AI tools such as ChatGPT, Dolly slash Midjourney to tweak my copyrighted content is not transformation, end quote. Alex sent this image, which pertains to this section of a video he owns. I'm putting them one after the other, then side by side, and I want people to pay attention to all the differences. For starters, the parallax animation itself is entirely different. It's anchored differently, it's cut differently. These are different- I like the, the mini nuclear explosions that are added as well forward as a single image in one but spreads as a three-layer parallax in the other boys uh i ate a lot of spice like five minutes ago 
I, I I gotta go, bro. I gotta go. Uh, to to, to keep to keep uh to keep watch time up. I'm gonna keep the video playing. Okay. Hang on. Let me just let me let me get him to take over. Hang on. Just, just give, give me a sec. Fuck. Oh, fuck me. Hang on. All right. All right. Yeah. Nice. All right. H Hassan. Hassan. You just you just stay there. Hang on. Fucking hell, Hassan. Jesus Christ. All right. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll be I'll be back in a minute, boys. The original fuck static out. source image alone which is effectively a requirement due to the historical significance in Andrew Carnegie's story of that particular mill or factory. Acknowledging that you stole someone's copyright openly can have a serious impact on whatever case they bring against hey you. Hey guys, and it's so Hessen now, here. Now lowly gagging in chat while my boyfriend is gone. Urgency, created this sense of panic, demanded an apology for egregious, unlawful actions, but the example he sent in his email is wrong. He's basically trying to assassinate a YouTube channel with three strikes while holding the deletion of their entire account over their head by using false examples. All right. This All is right. the point we, we can I have can, to ask you, a really big fate. Right, we'll in put, particular, the we're mutual gonna put bed. that I share with- All right, there, there, we, there we go. Hey, I hope I've earned the right to ask you this, and I, I do apologize if not, and this is out of line. So I, I made fun of him because I, I asked him to be in my Cruelty Squad video, and he never responded, so. Fine, but <clears throat> will all of you please respectfully get this on Asmongold's radar, or any other creators you frequently go, watch? Go back? Are you what? Okay, sorry. Yeah, no, nah, no, nah, it's, it's all right. It's all right. Especially ones that are larger in size. Maybe even the ones who defended Edson to begin with, with his whole Everyone call Pyro a coward when he comes back. YouTube's trying to undermine America and league with the Kremlin. I greatly appreciate Asmund's perspective, in particular on fair use. He has incredible reach. And even though my first trio of videos about Alex Edson harming the YouTube ecosystem did kind of well from a channel perspective, here he is again, Alex Edson, doing it worse than ever. And we need a lot of big guns to come out and kind of stop this from happening. Thank you, uh... How the fuck do I say your name? Farrakhan. Thank you. Thank you for the 10 months. Oh shit, now I'm meant to be his hand. Oh! The GOP! The G a lot of the major GOP. creators came out in support oh, of his anti-Russian uh, co co Communism. Pro-copyright. I, I bought a Switch. Co guys, communism, oh! I looked at all the legal filings. The current picture seems to indicate the, the, the bit that he's over. deliberately trying to assassinate channels on the platform. I've already got Carl Jacobs that fucking hates me. I don't, I don't think I'd, I'd want to add someone else to the list. ...platform for profit. We cannot let that stand. What's even worse, anyone who ever comments about this or my hey guys, videos... Hey guys, it's my boyfriend returned, but thanks to you, <laughs> I'm still here. <laughs> they're, they're using the Hassan TTS. That's genius. ...channel name or Magnates Media or anything like that or disagrees with Alex Edson in any way whatsoever gets fully deleted from his channel comments. He moderates that thing like a hawk. Every time you say anything that isn't perfectly in support of him, he'll get rid of you. He'll purge everything. I do not understand people that care about YouTube comments that much. It's, it's insane. I have never like deleted or blocked anyone in my life on, on YouTube. I, I, I'll see someone that has a bad take and I'm like, ah, oh, you kind of suck. But you know, like deleting it. If you delete stuff, it, it's just a Mandela effect. No, not Mandela. A Streisand effect. Buzzword. Where, where like you try to get rid of information and then it just brings more people like kind of more detractors thing because he's trying to cover up the fact that there's other information out there. What did I do to Carl Jacobs? I, I posted a video of, uh, I put, hang on, I'll, I'll see if I can find the video. I just don't think he was very happy with me. Yeah, I, I posted, I posted this a little while ago. Hang on. I, I've definitely already shown this. I post, I posted this on the 6th of April. What is this place? Who picked truck? Dude, this that is some me. Ohio stuff, bro. Will you shut the hell up? Get the hell off! Yeah, he he reached out and he wasn't he wasn't very happy. He just said like, uh, "What's all this then?" with like a puzzled face. And then I just said, uh, "It was a joke. I have no bad blood. I just thought the reaction was funny and also like an Ohio joke in current month. Come on, bro. Come on, bro." And then he never replies, and he doesn't follow me, despite me following him. So it's a bit it's a bit awkward. It's a bit it's a bit awkward. And the shady stuff that he's doing does not look good. Not just the mean ones or the ones with profanity either, the comments. Anything that mentions the, the shady dealings that he does or the, the ways he's attacking people or the tactics that he's using, they're all just gone and it goes even further. Prior to all of this, Alex Edson allegedly owned a multi-channel network called Power TV. Of course, I have all the evidence and the videos linked down below, but whatever. I'm using all the technical legal terminology, right? Allegedly, in my opinion, and blah, blah, blah. The gist of it is that Alex Edson appears to be seeking out instances where similar content is used by YouTubers compared to the material he purchased. After the apology evidenced by his track record with TV Novosti and RT, he will leverage it into a copyright lawsuit to demand as much money as possible from whoever he's targeting. And he's doing it right now, worse than ever, after arguing that there should be no burden of lawful adjudication. And YouTube should simply purge anyone that he files claims against.
I'm beat. Damn, this goes all the way back to 2016. I knew when I saw those old ass Minecraft avatars, it'd be something. This cannot be allowed to happen. Six collective seconds of similar content cannot be weaponized into the deletion of an entire popular. Ch I thought that was Keemstar. Channel, unless they unless they apologize when the accuser has a track record of then weaponizing the apology to inflict as much damage as possible. YouTubers, all of you. Please. Yeah, he has a very bad, uh, uh, honestly, like bro, I, I appreciate the effort he's put into this video, but bro did not need to make a 20 minute video listing everything. Hey Pyro. All he had to do was show that he was Happy Jake Paul's early manager. Birthday. Please protect yourselves from creators like this. Rally, get the word out, make sure everyone understands their own individual rights, and do not let a corrosive and, in my opinion, evil presence in the space. It's hilarious because he said, don't be evil a whole bunch of times. Dude, you're the evil one. What are you doing? You, we That's insane, though, how there's a track record that goes back to 2016. Like, this isn't, this isn't just one fuck up. This guy has just been a complete monster on the platform. Can't let him destroy the channels around. All, all the, I like how the opening to that doc is him as Jake Paul's manager. It's like they knew that that was such a heavy hitter. We can't let him destroy the channels around him with impunity. Now, in the interest of being as thorough as possible, because that is, of course, required when you're talking about legality and litigation, etc., Alex Edson is unhinged. He claims that Magnates <laughs> Media used generative AI to copy him, but I received access to the script for the main video in question, the one cited by Alex Edson in the only correspondence he ever sent to Magnates Media, and plugged every single paragraph into three separate leading AI detection tools. No meaningful hits at all. While imperfect, these tools can serve as a baseline. I have reviewed the version history of the script itself. So he put the script into AI readers like ChatGPT in case it was anything similar to what he was accused of, of being, you know, plagiarizing, and then just nothing, nothing comes up. Seen the timestamps, seen the edits, and the changes. It is my steadfast, resolute, and unshakable opinion that this script is not a generative AI derivative in any capacity. We're talking about the very fabric of fair use right now. Simply taking a similar topic with a similar image and animating it separately in an entirely unique way cannot be the justification for a channel to be deleted. Damn near blackmailed, in my opinion, by Alex Edson, based on the track record that I see. I'm trying to see, like, what else has even happened. This man wants to destroy YouTube. One of the most heinous and despicable acts you can commit in the YouTube... Oh, uh, this is the guy who did that, uh... You still got the Stranger Things to do? It's not Stranger Things, it's Evangelion, fuck off. Yeah, this is the guy who did that... Oh, established titles, that's right. Yeah. He, uh... Th this guy, like, did an expose on established titles, and he did a pretty good job, but then he went a little bit overboard. Like, I remember at one point he was... He did a list of, like, all the YouTubers that, uh, worked with, uh, established titles. Almost like kind of like a, a gotcha moment. He listed like all of them, almost like a, like a hit list to like go out and attack them. So yeah, it's just a little bit, a little bit. I mean, I, I get it. I get it. Little bro had a viral video. I do feel that these copyright strikes are a malicious attempt to silence this creator. If the channel decided to fight these strikes, there is a very real possibility he could be- I mean, false copyright strikes, like copyright strikes are always an attempt to silence. If it's not from a major co- I mean, even from major companies, it is always an attempt to silence because they don't want that content being out there. That's the entire point. They don't claim- they don't copyright claim you with the revenue, they copyright claim you as a takedown. The worst thing is as well, which just shows how fucked the um, system is with copyright strikes, uh, is if you want to appeal a copyright strike, you have to fill out a counterclaim, and that counterclaim you have to give your full legal name, you have to give your, your fucking home address, and all of that gets sent to the person. That happened to me. I, I had, uh, I'm sure I've said this story before, but like when I was doing like uh, montage, like MLG, uh, no, when I was doing the leafy copy commentary stuff, uh, I got a copyright claim from a guy. I made a video and he struck the video. I appealed it. I put in my real name. I put in my home address and then the guy emails it to me and he's like, got your home address now. You're fucked. Like I've moved and shit. Obviously I've moved like three times since then. But yeah, like, like that was scary. That was like, holy shit. And then I kind of realized, okay, I'm never doing that again. So now what happens is whenever I get a copyright strike, I, I just get like my company to put their, like their address there, like my, my MCN. But they could, they could like, if you're new on YouTube and you get targeted, man, you get fucked, it's scary. Alex reason for attempting to remove this channel, in my opinion, is completely unhinged. After talking to John, the owner of Magnates, he provided me with all of the detail as to why Alex is 
issued three strikes to his channel. The issue comes down to an- Dude, I, I, I saw him for a second and he just reminded me of the protagonist from uh, the Jedi game. Jedi, I, I found this out last stream. I, I, gotta, I gotta bring this up to you guys. I, I, I need to warn all of you now and it killed me. Jedi uh, Fallen Order, main character. Cameron Monaghan. Right. Okay. Okay. So he's an actor, right? Uh, he plays uh, Cal in Star Wars, but he also played the Joker. Not, not the Joker that you're thinking of. Not the Joker that you're thinking of. He played the Joker. The original Joker. <laughs> <laughs> I, I shown some clips of him on stream, man, and I was in tears. It was just, it was fucking awful. It was so, so bad. Oh my god! No way they did a lineup as well. Yeah, it was it was some it was it was acting. The, the, I, I mentioned this as well, which is kind of funny. So this was on Fox, right? They couldn't actually call him the Joker. They weren't allowed to because of a licensing issue. So he's allowed to look like the Joker, act like the Joker. Like he looks like the Joker. He's wearing you know the the fucking purple coat. A Joker wears because Joker would always wear like purple and green, right? But he's not actually allowed to be called the Joker. He's just called Jerome, that's right. Yeah, instead of instead of Joker, they called him Jerome, and then he had a twin brother called Jeremiah. It's just like, it's so bizarre. Like, copyright licensing is so bizarre. The detail as to why Alex issued three- The comedian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The joke, the prankster is, is a YouTube prankster. He strikes to his channel. The issue comes down to an editing technique known as the parallax effect. This photo editing technique turns simple two-dimensional images into a semi-three-dimensional image and is used by many editors across YouTube to create stunning visuals from a boring static image. Magnate's media editor used this effect on a public domain image of a factory that was owned by Andrew Carnegie in 1905 for his Andrew Carnegie documentary. And we know this image is stunning. Stuck. This is a publicly available image. It's not like, you know, when somebody bought that like TV crack screen from I, I Stuck. This is a, an image that anyone can use, no watermark. This documentary is nearly an hour long and Alex claimed seven seconds of his video and issued a copyright strike to remove it from YouTube. On top of that, John provided me with a video evidence of his timestamp work editing his script over an entire week in Google Documents. In my opinion, it's clear to me this script was not stolen by John. Jesus Christ. I'm actually so jealous of that, like the amount of like cleanliness there with editing. I just open up, I open up Word and then I just type in soup. Next, John made it very clear to me that his editor was the one that created the parallax image of Carnegie Steel Mill and it was not stolen. Alex provided images showing that the two edited photos were similar, but Magnates is clearly different with added color and bomb effects added. On top of that, John provided me with a detailed 16 minute video showing his editor recreating the parallax image in the video from scratch. This video, in my opinion, proves that John's team did not steal the copyrighted 3D image from Business Casual and makes Alex copyrighted claim against John's video void. In total, Alex made three copyrighted strikes against John's videos for a total of 12 seconds of footage in the videos that collectively equal over an hour and a half of airtime. The Why did he, he claim a video about Starbucks? How Starbucks really became a coffee. I, I'm very sure that says like coffee giant, but I like to imagine the video which is called how Starbucks really became coffee. I'd like to imagine that, you know, my video I did on Far Cry 3. I, I'd like to imagine that someone just does like a let's play of Far Cry 3 and then they use that footage to copyright strike my video. That could, that could probably actually happen. That could actually probably happen because of how dog shit YouTube is. To delve into just what kind of person would so callously seek to ruin another creator's livelihood, we don't have to look far into Alex Edson's past to discover the truth. When Alex was just a teenager, he started a multi-channel network that grew massively, and at one point had- Oh, I keep seeing these TikToks, right? And it's like, these two guys, and it's like, oh, this is how we started our career. We started off, you know, with nothing, working in our bedroom, and now we're out here in Dubai, chilling in a Ferrari. And then you see it, and you're like, how did that make the money? How did they make that money? Hmm. And then you click on their bio, it's drop shipping. Every single time it's drop shipping. Every single time without a doubt. Jake Paul as a client. If you're familiar with MC <laughs> I, know. I know I've seen this image like five times, but I love it, man. CNs, they have a long history of screwing over creators who join them, with H3H3 recently talking about their recent fight over payments with their MCN just a few weeks ago. 
Alex oh, I didn't even know he was part of that MCN. The plot thickens. Yeah, if you guys remember, uh, H3 was being screwed over by his MCN because uh, they were basically stealing like half of his money for his uh, channel memberships. You know channel memberships when you guys join? Uh, so they were like, well, it's not really YouTube revenue. And it's like, I mean, it's a source of revenue from YouTube. It's like, it's like what the fuck else do you want? Fight over payments with their MCN just a few weeks ago. Alex company known as Power TV also had a long history of YouTube channels that over the years have felt screwed by Power TV. Alex sold Power TV, which seems to have netted him a large sum of money. He later used his riches to buy the YouTube channel Business Casual. Many people have made statements that after he bought it, the production value of the channel went down massively. Alex then used his new massive channel to produce his video talking about suing YouTube, which now- One thing I love about these kinds of people is that this guy, Alex, like he obviously made millions when he was young, right? And the problem is with that, it really fucks you up. It really fucks you up because you reach the ceiling of what you can do like so, so early on in life. And it kills all your aspirations. If you can buy anything you want, if you can buy like anything material, it really fucks you up. And you, you kind of have to look inside yourself a little bit to see what you actually want in life, you know, like self-fulfilling because you can buy it anything you want. And it, it does ruin a lot of people if they can't find a way to like introspect like, like inside themselves. So it, it's like, what am I going to do? Oh, fuck it. I'll buy a YouTube channel. I'll be a motivational speaker. Uh, YouTube, oh, Google's a bad company. Oh. New massive channels produces video talking about suing YouTube which now has open it's like who was it whoa vicky as well like she's absolutely minted and then i hear she's fucking miserable many believe nah, that, that alex was the creator of the it. channel and worked his way up making the channel what it is today but had no idea he simply bought an already successful channel and is now using that to get other channels removed from the platform whenever he feels a minor transgression has been committed against his channel alex successfully got the youtube channel rt arabic what's that what's that thing what's that thing that dog you, you fucking guys are like pavlov's dog you, you know that bit you know that bit with the dog and and, and whenever the bell rings it salivates because it, it, it's given food that's what that that's you guys with the fucking w key on your keyboard pavlov's dog literally uh, this is chat this is chat when they see uh pyro being sad this is the W key on the keyboard. Uh, I'm gonna keep spamming it when someone roasts him. Oh my God, owned. Removed from owned. YouTube. This is a very dangerous game that needs to be stopped or it will ruin the YouTube platform forever. That's, that's so weird. Okay, he's catastrophizing it a little bit, but like, imagine if you could actually claim other YouTubers of a similar editing style. That's insane. I mean, uh, I'm trying to think. Thing is, the get game reviewers on YouTube, we kind of all have different styles, right? Like Maxor, his is like uh, complete ADHD. Uh, Seth to Syntax is like kind of more timed jokes and stuff, look like kind of more slower. Mine is just, I don't know, fucking mental illness. Like some people are very minimal editing, which is fine. But yeah, I, I can't imagine any two YouTubers that have a similar style. Because that would be like, holy shit, it's over. It'd actually be over. Dude, imagine if, it, if, imagine if it bled onto topics as well. It's like, if you talked about a topic first and someone else did it, you could strike them. Critical could basically shut down half of YouTube. Finally, I wanted to mention that I have reached out to Alex Edson several times as I wanted to get both sides of the story. When okay, how much How much you want to bet he didn't reply? How much you want to bet? I bet five dollar on the table right now. When I first heard about Magnate's channel getting strikes, hey, I tweeted Byron, Business what Casual do you two think times of and limiting never... Ad blockers. Limiting ad blockers? Oh, that's kind of interesting i i think it, it's kind of good because i'm greedy and i love money but at the same time like i'll be honest with you right i, I got youtube premium on parasynical right so i can watch videos without ads and then a little bit of money gets sent to the creator as youtube red revenue or youtube premium revenue whatever they fucking call it they keep changing the name every month but like uh whenever i switch to another account another account where i have to watch ads it's fucking insufferable but like, I cannot watch an ad. It, it, it's genius, man. It actually helps me be productive. So like when I'm doing research, right? When I'm doing research, I'll open up the YouTube homepage. I will see like a list of videos, right? And I, I, I before I can even go to the search bar, I'll see a video and be like, oh, I want to click that. I want to see that. I want to waste my time with slop. But then as soon as an ad plays, I'm like, no, 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 no. Like, like I'm, the, the, the mind is broken. I, I don't want to click on it. So it actually helps me be productive. So whenever I'm trying to do actual work, I switch to my account that doesn't have YouTube premium. Days later, I contacted the email of Business Casual again, asking for comment why the strikes were made. 
and never received a response. I have given every attempt to Alex Edson to tell his side of the story, and he has decided to provide no response to my request for comment. I want to urge everyone to share this video and to try and get more channels to talk about this attempt to erase a channel from YouTube because of a similar editing style. This type of behavior should... Jake Paul, edit a moment.